Good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Bringing you here in cerebral delight. Now, like two weeks ago, I went for a journey. And I was seeing fractal geometry, which I don't know if you've ever seen that. But that alone can be pretty intense. So I'm on this journey and it starts off with a lot of fractal geometry some types of faces and figures that I, I can't even describe. They're just pretty profound. And it starts moving from that. You know, everything's moving and breathing. And then, like, there are these plastic bubbles. And it's like these rectangular plastic cylinders. And it went from, like, the fractal geometry to making these plastic bubbles. And, like, I'm inside of one of them. And... It seems like there are like things moving across and like like wisps of energy and stuff like that and that's a recurring theme that's happened on these journeys and then it shifts from this like plastic bubble like world to what seemed like I was in a computer like everything around me kind of seemed like as if you put a small camera in a computer like, that was my perspective. Like, it was like a third-person perspective of, a, of the inside of a computer. And then it shifted where I was, like, first-person part of the computer, like a computer component. And then there were, like, other components that were, like, shifting and moving. And it started to, like, kind of, like, stabilize. And all of a sudden those other shifting components it was like if you were to make it like an animation it would have been like a ram stick was like a person and these things were like working on the computer like the, it was like i was in the computer watching things do their jobs and all of a sudden it was like they noticed me and like this ram stick like turned to me and looked and there was like what looked, what seemed like some type of security officer of like the computer world. And like he see me and he went, hey, and I was in the chair and I just, poof, I got blown back. It was the craziest thing. Like I got tased very, very strong. Like I felt such a jolt that left, it didn't leave any marks or anything, but I felt it. I felt this like somebody had tased me with a taser. And I just couldn't believe it. I was laughing and it, it put an end to the journey pretty quick. <laughs> but that should, that was crazy. It was crazy. And, you know, things like that can definitely take you outside of yourself. Put you, put you in a different headspace. And just make you think like, what the fuck was that? What was that? And how did I get tased like that? Like where literally somebody tased me in my arm. I went flying back in the chair and I just couldn't believe it. So that's that. Figure I start this off with something, something interesting. Although there's been a lot of crazy shit going on last two weeks. I mean, got the whole Israel Palestine thing, you know, right now it's like, we're in the middle of two proxy wars. We're feeding all this money to the Ukraine. Which, to be quite honest, I, I, I guarantee you that you're gonna, we're going to find out that a lot of that money is not going to the Ukraine. A lot of that money, for certain, is going to the UN. I guarantee it. Because whatever's happening with these globalists, they're, 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 they're loosening their ties with America. They really do want to prop up and create like their own type of thing. And I think it's going to start from the UN. Because you you heard about the UN being involved in Lahaina in Hawaii. There, there, was, there were stories coming out. I mean, nowadays you can't even believe anything. Like everything has to just be like, well, that's probably one side of it. As much as it seems. I mean, there's always two sides. But a lot more so nowadays where it's like, is that even true? Is that even real? These videos, these things that you see these news articles, at, at least with the big companies, when there's something wrong, you tend to hear about it, but like with all, 
with the fact that social media and the internet is just like taking over entirely with the source of of everything and and you know they're they're pushing their own like remote world they they wef even said like they want everybody working remotely like there are good things to come across from where they're pushing the direction of the world but it's like they're trying to sugarcoat it they're trying to make it appealable you know and that's why there's just like less and less companies now like you're getting funneled like they're figuring out a way like with the internet it opened up the corral of the sheep pen you know like like people were able to just move freely communicate freely find out information freely you kind of could move up and down the economic ladder with ease like the internet opened up everything and it's like all the powers that be they had such a tight grip on everything for so long over like decades almost a century really you know that these things have started i mean yeah back in like 90 you know we're in 2023 now so it's like we tend to forget that shit a lot of people it's like Certain things in society have not changed at all since like 1960 and other things are just like outpacing us completely where it's like we don't even understand what's going on anymore. There's just so many moving parts. Things are not being fixed that are clearly fixable and you know we're, we're pretty minimal solution but now the fact that nothing has been happened or changed over all this time it's like some of these things require massive changes and, and just upheaval and uphaul and you know renewal but for the most part a lot of the things work over here it's just the fact that there's only a certain degree of corruption that can get in before people are just like all right man this is too much and even right now there's just so much going on that it can definitely be hard to really put that all together in in one one precise package you know and it seems like the way the way that things are moving is just in a fashion that it's like they've psychoanalyzed the cause and effect to social congregation and like socio psychological economic dynamics where you know like think of the toilet paper shortage that happened like a lot of people forget about the toilet paper shortage that happened this happened so many times in the past where like they create these these scares that it just drives the West, people in America, just to go buying stuff like crazy. I mean, like Black Friday, look at that stuff. Like, people trample over each other to go, like, buy shit that they don't even need. So, anyway, between, like, the toilet paper scare, the, and then it moved into the baby formula scare after that. And then it was like, people were just panicking, going nuts. So... It's like all of these things, the CIA, there's so many programs and shit between the CIA, the FBI, the U.S. government. There's so many things that they've done where they're like, they're gauging the people's reactions to things. And it's like between that and then the corrupt globalists and shit who are like always working off of the populace, you know, they're always trying to swing things through and like Bill Gates, he's like, why do people not like me too much now? Everybody's calling me a, a crazy man and somebody that wants the, the end of humanity. It's like, yeah, dude, because look at what you're doing, bro. You, you humble beginnings. You started off in a fucking garage. And like, I, I just don't understand why these people like nobody wants to give up the fucking reins that's the problem anymore like there's so many gatekeepers and now that it's like the pens are open the gatekeepers are like scrambling they're fucking scrambling to put up these new gates and fences and like all of these things and now so many people are falling for this shit where it's like stop buying shit from these big corporations like i don't understand why people don't get it that it's so simple to have an effect in this country on things. Not when it comes to voting. Voting is another fucking problem with the politics and all that stuff. But when you're talking about businesses who are really behind a lot of this shit, the, the corporations are going hand in hand with the corrupt government. And they're fucking, they're working with this stuff. So it's like, if people can put an end to the companies willingly going along with the government's bullshit, and giving them all this data too and and oh forget about it. it it's sickening 
what's going on. And that's going on currently with the social media companies. That's a huge thing. There's, there's, I think it's Michigan or Missouri versus Biden. And it, it's pretty much going into all of this stuff about how, you know, the social media companies and the government, the corrupt part of our government, they've been going hand in hand for a long time. And it's like, this is like an extrapolation of what has been happening in general with the national TV and all of this shit. There's programming that literally is put in there by the CIA or the FBI and like they, they give a nod to stuff, especially in the movie industry. You can't make a movie about that involves the U.S. government without them giving you the approval for something. So it's like there's always been a hand in hand with the government and the private enterprise here. But it's like, there's been a huge difference of what makes the West the West and what makes the East and Russia and China what they are. And it's like, there's a slow intermingling right now where a lot of the institutions and how they operate in the West are like slowly becoming how they are in the East. It's like, even though China, it's all the government and Russia, it's all the government that runs everything. You know, they tell the private companies what to do and and what to make and this and that but now it's changing over there in china and russia a lot of the the free market tends to drive things it's still completely owned by the government but you have like the free market is more so moving things than it was back in the fully communist days of russia and china you know maybe 60 years ago 40 years ago Nowadays, they've learned, and things move in, in more of a capitalist way. It's just that they completely control the means of production in the East. Over here, you do actually own your company. You know, the government can't just come and take all your shit, at least legally and in most circumstances. So it's like, things are the opposite on both sides of the world with the way that the, the government runs things. But now, things are starting to coalesce, and it's like, all the corruption in the West is now like bleeding into the system and it's making things operate more in that fashion where it's like the people are just this this like puzzle piece or this this massive mass herd to like move to the edge and scare the shit out of them and get these certain types of reactions from them. Oh, we, we need a, we need the populace to support a war. Oh, well, let's like scare the shit out of them and, and have, you know, a, a terrorist incident happen. It's like. This is the fucked up shit that's starting to happen, all because the people are not really taking control of things and letting things, like, self-correct, because the people who were, like, in power doing these things just keep getting elected, and then people are trying to say, like, dude, there's, there's fraud, there's, you know, election fraud, and this, and all these things happening, and, you know, people at the top level of companies doing ridiculous things with taxpayers money or people who invested in their company and then all of a sudden they get bailed out by the by the government and it's like how are these people not intertwined in some way that's why you want to talk about like conspiracies and they did a great job with that fucking word because no matter what you do that word is just always tainted with anything meanwhile there are so many conspiracy theories at this point that have just proven to be conspiracies like they're there are actual things where people are conspiring to do something. And it's like, right now, you even have a lot of these people in the WEF and everything. They're like openly saying this shit. There was a lady the other day that was just saying how it's good news that the globalists all see the same picture. And they're all working together now more than ever. But she said the bad news was that the people polled all over different countries around the world. The people polled were not happy with the elites. And she even deemed herself the elite. So this is how these people think. They think that they know better than you. And they're going to be the ones to like lead the herd. And it's like, we want leaders. We don't want to just blindly be led. So there's a huge difference. These people don't understand that because they're so disconnected from the populace. And they think that because they're like in these positions over us, that they know better than us. Meanwhile, they, they know better than the fucking toilet bowl in their bathroom about the current state of things because that's the only thing coming out of them is fucking shit. So, 
we really need to put a lid on this stuff. Call it for what it is. Stop letting this shit happen. Stop supporting these companies who are doing all of this stuff. And we could definitely be at a better place in our own lives. You know, like, even detaching ourselves from workplaces and and institutions that are pushing this shit along. And, you know, just being being communal. Working together with your fellow man. Because that's all this stuff is pushing us, pushing us in these, like, this massive divide, you know. And we have to keep it on a community, local level. And, you know, stay strong with your families and try and keep things together. You know, certain things, they don't always work out. But you really got to do your best to to not give in to the easy way in life. Because that's only going to contribute to the continued destruction of not only your own life, but just the lives around you just constantly cutting corners or doing things the easy way it's just it's getting out of fucking control at this point excuse my language <laughs> and then you know there's like there's divisions of powers even at the highest tiers there's forces moving us in direction that we inevitably intend to and there's foul players attempting to hijack and sabotage any attempts at self-correction in this process it's very possible that much of the intention of what's taking place nowadays is a culmination of what the powers of good had intended to unveil in interweave into society. And it's just like the manipulation is something that it's always happened, you know. We've always had people who who manipulate us and people forget that a lot of the the good things are forms of manipulation as well i mean there's back in the day the village shaman you know who pretty much helped and healed you with sometimes just a bunch of bullshit some dirt and herbs that he rubbed into your cut or whatever and it's like just the power of you know the placebo effect thinking these things will come to pass that they will be that they are as he says or they say it's it can be profound, the effects that you feel, the things that happen. So, you know, those shamans were like manipulating people for the most part. Yeah, there might have been herbal medicine used and everything, but it's like the herbal poultices and the psychological ton tonics of motivation, inspiration, and the spiritual, logical emphasis of the practical world, you know, they, they help people, they healed people. I mean, you're troubled nowadays, and you see a psychologist who manipulates your emotions. You know, you go to school, you see a teacher, they manipulate your intelligence, at least hopefully in, in a good way. You know, a physical trainer who manipulates your body and your mind to push itself beyond where it has been before. And, you know, a doctor who manipulates your body to, to fix things and, you know sometimes tells you that you're going to be all right and you know maybe even just that is enough to help you out so there are things that you know we need to realize that there's always like another side to everything and nowadays these same tools that were being used for good by our government by these institutions they're kind of being used against us and we have to be more aware of that nowadays that's the big part of the reason why the free market is supposed to push people out of the market. You know, these companies that have existed for this long, they, they keep buying up the competition, you know. So eventually what should supersede them is now a part of them. And then sometimes it doesn't even go to the next level because it's like, oh, oh that was too big of a jump. That competitor was like amazing holy crap they would have put us out of business and they buy them up and then they just improve their service a little bit and it's like we continue on this retrograde of like you know slow but gradual improvements whereas if things were able to really do as they should things would be catching up we wouldn't have sewer systems that are like 60 years outdated we wouldn't have you know religion that's like archaic in and in its institutions that have you know child molesters and prolific evil being done by these institutions that are claiming to be 
of one way, but you know, their actions tell another. It's just, there's so many things nowadays that with, with the abundance of information and the wealth of resources that we have, there is such little excuse that we cannot change things for the better. And the mindset of almost every person out there right now is that they want the world to be a better place. They want their family, they want fortune and well-being for their family, their friends, their communities. You know, there's nobody out there for the most part with ill wishes to, uh, toward other people. Just somehow, all these fucked up people are the ones that are like getting into positions of power. And it, it can't just be that that's how it is and that's a coincidence, you know? there's people at certain levels that are just helping this along and it's like this this recyclical effect or cyclical effect that it's just like feeding itself you know the people who are good are getting shoved off to the side and anybody who's possessing these you know destructive values towards society they're, they're getting perpetuated and i don't know why there's not more like grassroots movements, you know, like I, I always said, why the hell when it comes to like how the government sabotages a lot of these protests, because they've done it with the right and the left there. There's been plenty of times and situations where what would be considered Democrat protests, you know, by all of the hippies, for example, in the 70s and stuff like that, they the government put an end to that, like they, they started to go after a lot of the protesters for indirect things that put an end to the whole freedom movement back then. And the same thing happened with Wall Street when there was the protests on Wall Street and everything. And that was a fairly libertarian, liberal, liberal protest for, you know, the whole elite to be shaken up and everything. And they put an end to that. They put an end to the January 6th thing. So I don't understand why people don't put two and two together and realize that if you're going to organize and try and get things done, you're also going to be sabotaged. And now, this is fucking America, baby. Put these people under citizen's arrest. If you see somebody and you're protesting and they fucking throw Molotovs or like they're, they're trying to incite violence so that the whole fucking thing gets shut down, put those people under citizen's arrest. Arrest these fucking people and hold them ransom from the police and say, yo, we're not giving up these people until we know that they're going to actually be tried in the court system. And the FBI is not just going to like let these people out because they were working for them basically and helping them do their, their fucking dirty work. So yeah, I mean, we need to put an end to this stuff. There are solutions for this shit. We need to be, you know, active. We need to, we need to do the same shit that they've done. They've weaponized these people that are quick to pick it. They're out there. They don't even know what the hell the reason they're in the street is. They're just told to be mad at something and they go out there. Maybe they, they get a little bit of funding and stuff like that, but it's not much. It's not much. So why is this not being done to counteract that? Because these people are wrong. They're out there for the wrong reasons. They don't know why they're there. They don't have any real veracity to their claims or why they're there. They're not going to put up much of a fight in the end for their point for their side so at the at the point that they're contested with any means of of real information it, it the whole thing crumbles and it happens every time so i don't know people people need to get involved with that stuff and stop being silly and shit and it's like yo you're gonna go do something right you're gonna gather and protest and and be a peaceful protest and everything make sure that you shut down the people fucking sabotage and everything because that is just it's ruining the whole thing like nobody wants to even do anything now because it seems so easy for for everybody who's doing the right thing to get thrown in jail meanwhile the ones who sabotaged it are just you know they had masks on then nobody nobody knows who they were so it's just ridiculous at this point you know and and it's it's like last what was it yeah last week Oh no, it might have been yesterday that the border agency, uh, what was that CBP or whatever, released the numbers saying the like 8 million illegals, illegal entries into the US, according to the border agency. 
So it's like, it's just not slowing down in any way. And why would they be doing stuff like that and not, and just ignoring it when they know that almost every American law abiding citizen in this country is not okay with this shit. And it's like the internal and external foreign interests, they all do the same thing that the corrupt people in this country do. They create a framework for the populace to support, all the while furthering the corruption and crony capitalism. It's like global warming. They want you to do your part to fix everything. Meanwhile, all that money is going toward basically companies that are going to go bankrupt like Solyndra and Solaire and uh, all of these subsidized things by the government that they're just pumping money into them to be like, yeah, we're, we're doing something about that. And then it just, it, it goes to people, they don't go to jail. All of this, this is like what's happening. All of this money between the Ukraine, all the pandemic stuff, it's all just money being siphoned from the American populace. There's like an endless supply of money coming from the West, and they've learned how to utilize almost everything to just go right into their pockets. Like it's like BLM, the black people just begging, begging, please do something for us, do something. Nothing. They're buying mansions, they're doing whatever they want. It's just nuts. Stop putting your faith in these big institutions, these other people who don't give a shit about you. Stop funding these things stop giving your money and your time to these other people you want to help go out and help somebody you want to help a black guy go help the first friggin homeless guy you see that's black i mean i don't understand where a lot of this i guess it's just the emptiness to some degree nowadays everybody feels like they should be doing more and they're you know not doing their part so everybody is like susceptible to just like, oh, I can do this to help out, you know, I can do this to be a part of this movement and, and feel important and everything. And we need more selfless people in this world because, good God, we're still running off the foundation that, like, dudes in the 1920 built. Like, the West, other than the te technology and the improvements we, we've made with the military, like, the whole infrastructure of the West is, like, running on what dudes in 1920 built you know the sewer systems the fucking pipelines i mean underneath new york city there's like 200 meters of fucking just tunnels and and highways under the ground that weren't even finished and you know all the aqueducts and forget about it there's stuff that nowadays we're like how'd they do that and that's why we say shit like that with the fucking pyramids and everything because it's kind of hard to comprehend what what humanity can do when we put our all into things, you know? And, like, people just kind of die for the things that they feel they're on a mission to, to accomplish, you know? Like, they're just set in that, these people in the past. And that's what they did. And they didn't complain too much. And, I mean, I don't know. The things that got accomplished were absolutely remarkable for what they had at the time and what they were able to do it should always be an example to humanity that like we never have a place to complain at least when we're being like oh the god the world is terrible and everything is falling apart in the west you know and many places abroad still doing so well off compared to any other point in time the, how the hard you got to work, how difficult your daily life is. It's just nothing compared to what people had to deal with before. And we still can't even get basic shit done nowadays. And we're always like passing the buck and waiting for somebody else to figure things out. But, you know, it's got to start somewhere, right? It's got to start somewhere. And it all starts with you. And thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Hang around. There'll be more coming soon. If you like this, please subscribe, like the video, share it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.